Now let's talk about the bony features of this bone, beginning with the upper end. So the upper end of the ulna has processes. The two protruding process in the upper end are the olecranon process, which is the larger process, and the lower process is known as the coronoid process. And connecting these two processes, this is a notch. The notch is known as the trochlear notch. Apart from this, there is an ulnar tuberosity, and over here, this, the part lateral to the coronoid process, is the radial notch. Now, let's talk about the processes individually. This is the olecranon process. It has in an anterior surface, a superior surface, a posterior surface, a medial surface, and a lateral surface. The most important of these is the posterior surface is which is triangular in shape and it is the triangular subcutaneous area that you can currently feel in on the posterior part of your elbow joint. You can literally feel it because it's a subcutaneous triangular area. Apart from this, the superior surface posteriorly has a little rough area for an important insertion that we'll study later on. Medial surface, the lateral surface, and finally, the anterior surface is con containing the upper part of trochlear notch. So this is the trochlear notch. Let's move on to the trochlear notch. The trochlear notch is basically articulating with the trochlea of the humerus that we studied earlier. Moving on, let's talk about the coronoid process. Coronoid process has a superior surface. An anterior surface, the anterior surface contains the ulnar tuberosity, which is less prominent than the radial tuberosity. This is the ulnar tuberosity. The lateral part of the coronoid process consists of the radial notch for articulation with the head of the radius to form the superior radio ulnar joint. Just beneath this is a depression to accommodate the radial tuberosity. And just posteriorly, we have the supinator crest for the attachment of supinator muscle. Let's go to its medial surface. The medial surface is smooth. And finally, the superior surface, which is right here. So that is all about the upper end of the ulna. Let's talk about the shaft of the ulna. The shaft of the ulna consists of three borders. First is the anterior border. The anterior border is basically starting from this area and it is thick and rounded and it ends on the medial side of the lower end or the head of the ulna or the medial side of styloid process. Then second border is the lateral border. This begins above from the supinator crest superiorly and then it goes down to the lateral side of the lower end. And finally, the posterior border of the ulna. The posterior border of the ulna is beginning from the triangular subcutaneous area and it ends at the base of the styloid process. The borders divide the shaft of the ulna into three surfaces between the lateral and the anterior border is the anterior surface. This contains the nutrient foramen of the bone. The surface between the anterior and posterior border is known as the medial surface. So between the anterior and posterior border is the medial surface. And between the lateral and the posterior border is the posterior surface of the ulna. Now let's talk about the lower end. The lower end basically consists of the head of the ulna and the uh, styloid process and the styloid process lies posteromedially. Apart from this, there is the head of the ulna is basically going to form a joint with the lower end of the radius at its ulnar notch. This is the inferior radio ulnar joint. So there are two joints, the superior radio ulnar and the inferior radio ulnar. These joints are important for pronation supination movements. So that was all about the bony features. Join me in the next video where we discuss the origin insertions.